Hey, hi, hello everyone. Today I am providing a really exciting teaser video from one of my Skillshare courses about using Dubsado as a stationary designer. You can access the course on Skillshare for free uh, for two months if you use the link below in our description. This little teaser video is about how we use Dubsado to um, collect leads and to allow some of those leads to provide us the information that we need moving forward so that we are doing a little bit less work and we have everything that we need in one place, of course, of Sato. You can always use my code Design by Lainey for 20% off your first month or year with Dubsado, um, and I'll link that below in the description for you as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll give us a like, comment to let us know what you thought of it, and of course subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos for stationary designers and creative entrepreneurs. In the projects dashboard and we'll head over to the leads tab. We currently only have the one we created for Jim and Pam. You can make the clients do some of this work for you by using what's called a lead capture form. This is the first of a few forms we're gonna talk about. So come on over to the left under templates and select forms. I have a bunch loaded in here from my other account, which is part of that awesome Dubs customer service I mentioned. So let's ignore all the left ones for a minute and focus on this right one, lead capture. As you'll see, I have a few. Let's take a look at my main one, which is just new lead capture form. It's got all the information up here that we'll need to create a quote, including contact info, services, event date, guest counts, budget, etc. I like to give clients an idea of what my average client spends over here so that if it's way over budget, they don't waste their time or my time. I also included a file uploader, which is one of my favorite parts of Dubsado, so they can upload inspiration images or pictures that they like for their wedding. So we'll close out of here and show you how to create one. All you have to do is in this column, just click plus. We're gonna rename this sample lead capture. The same form building principles we're going to use for all of our forms, so pay attention here. There are a few automatic fields that are required in a lead capture form, which include your names, your email address, and your job start date. The rest you can see are not required. We'll need this information to create a project if you remember when we did that manually, so a lead capture form requires you to have all of that information. The other forms don't necessarily, as you'll already have the client information loaded in. So all of these forms that are not required, we can go ahead and delete. I don't really need a phone number usually, and I don't love this comments box. The right hand side has all the tools you'll need to build out your form. Just click on whatever you want and it adds it to the bottom automatically. Then you can click and drag and change the order of things as you like. You can add columns, text box, images, a lot of different types of questions here. Um, date selects, custom code, a file uploader, which we showed you earlier, and a couple of these things, which are more advanced features. All of these are fairly self-explanatory and entirely customizable. I'll show you how to do the columns, though, because that can be a little bit tricky. So we'll go ahead and drag our columns over here. Click within that box to edit it. Then you can choose whether there are two columns, three columns, or four columns. And you can choose whether you want the title to show or not. You can also, of course, rename that title to whatever you want. I like to use columns in my lead capture to make the form look shorter. So all you do is grab whatever piece you want and then drag it. You'll see that it automatically populates that column. And then clients aren't quite so scared because you don't have such a long contact form. So we'll save this as a template, and then we'll head back to my form to show you what one looks like completed. You can always edit the design, so don't worry if you're not sure it's perfect. I added and moved things around as I went. We have this invite count question because people would often confuse invite and guest counted. I also have an estimated budget option instead of leaving that open-ended because people often just put as low as possible or something similar or left it blank. I also ask where their pieces are going to ship to as I get international requests sometimes now and I charge tax based on the location of the client. It's a balance between keeping it short and getting enough information to create your accurate quote. But if you find yourself wondering anything while creating a quote, that's an idea that maybe you should add that question to the lead capture. 
If a client isn't willing to do a little work up front to get the most accurate information, then that's a sign that they are probably not the best client anyway. So once you have this built out, we'll check on the settings. We'll talk about workflows in part two of this series, but just know that you can always apply one directly in the lead capture. Or potentially this lead capture will lie in a place that only collects a certain type of job. So in that case, you can just put a little thank you note. Um, if it's always gonna be about invitations, you can talk about the next steps. You can provide resources in this message. You can do whatever you want here. The status will indicate uh, which of those indicators your lead comes in as. So we're just gonna leave them as a lead active. And as on all forms, you can change um, colors, fonts, font sizes, your submit button text, etc. Now you always wanna save your forms regularly. One tiny downside is that every once in a while, my Dipsado will have a jinky moment while I'm building a form and I'll lose all my progress. So you can still save and remain on that same page just by clicking up here. You also have, of course, save and close when we're done, save as, which will make it a new template, or save and preview, which will just show you the client view of that form. It looks a little bit bland. There's no pictures, logo, anything colorful, but that's because we actually have this one embedded on our website directly, and we've added some of that information on the website instead of putting it on the form. So here's what that looks like. You wouldn't even notice that this isn't part of my website. It just looks like a part of that page directly. So how do you do that? Let's head back to Dubs and click Share. There's a few different ways. You'll see a direct link, which is something that you can send directly to a client if you like, and you'll see this giant block of embed code. This is what you'll use to embed into your site. If you click this link right here, it'll tell you how to do that for a lot of different platforms. Show it, Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, and Folio, et cetera. We have Squarespace, so it's as simple as adding a code block to the page and clicking copy paste. Any changes that you make to the lead capture in Dubsado will automatically update wherever it's embedded upon refreshing your site. As a little side note, sometimes when you're editing, you might make some changes and not see them directly showing up in Dubsado. So all you have to do in that case is refresh them and your status and dashboard and everything will update. So once someone fills out your lead capture, you'll get an email that says new lead capture and contains all of the information they entered. They'll automatically show up under projects leads as well. And when you click on them, like we've done here, the lead capture will be housed in this form section automatically in case you need to access it at any point. Whenever you wanna update them to a job, you can just use this drop down here and put whichever status indicator you want for them. I typically will take the lead capture information and use that to send out a proposal. Make sure you check out our entire course on Skillshare. Of course, it is linked below along with all the other supplies that we mentioned. You can always use my code Design by Laney for 20% off your first month or year with Dubsado, um, and I'll link that below in the description for you as well. Give us a like, comment, or subscribe to tell us what you thought of this video and also to help us keep creating tutorials for you every week.